Hey everybody. Um, I guess I'm gonna start this one here off on the third week of walking in the woods. I'm back here in the creek. I'm gonna walk it around a little bit. To see if I can find anything in the creek too. There's two dogs up there. Yeah, it's Kippy and Molly. Mother baby, she's right there. That's my baby girl, Sky. But anyhow, I'm on. We had a really good torrential rainfall yesterday. So I'm gonna kind of walk around on these rock bars and see if I can find something out here because I do love looking for arrowheads and I do find quite a few of them back here. So I'm gonna see what I can find. If I find anything, you'll be able to see them. Guys, this is pretty cool. This is the first one I've ever found this far up this creek, even as a kid growing up. I'm going to pick him up together. Check him out. A freshwater mussel. He's up here cleaning up my creek. And put him back down in there. Let him do what he does. That's awesome. First one I've ever found back here. Right behind the house. That's cool. Y'all can see how my walk in the woods goes. I don't want to go too fast. I don't want to make anybody drunk. Yeah. They're crazy. Very crazy. There's my baby girl over there, Sky. In between the trees. Alright, I'm out of the creek now. The only thing I found that was actually considered an artifact would be this uh, Devotage Flake. Tell it by the Volvo Percussion. Uh, some of the flakes on the other side. It's a thin flake. I didn't find no actual points, but come back up through the woods. And we do have this. If you can see them, little bitty white tops on them. And then there's a couple little green tops right there starting to poke through. Uh, there's there's one over there if the dog doesn't step on it it's starting to bloom out a little bit got another dog right here anyhow that is blood root coming up uh, there's one down there if I can zoom in close enough yeah you can see it right there a little white so, blood root is starting to come up. And there's a bunch of it out here all over the place. I'm trying to be careful where I'm stepping at because it's growing all over out here. All right, folks. Lee told me the blood root was up. And I have been planning on getting some of it. So we're going to go down here and look at it and tell you a little bit about it and get some of it. Um, I'm just going to get a little bit and dry it for a salve that I uh, had kind of been wanting to make. Um, another little quick, quick thing. I've told this before on a, on a video. Uh, my dad used to hunt uh, ginseng, uh, golden seal, and bloodroot when I was young and um, he would take us out in the woods and of course ginseng's a lot harder to find and golden seal is a little easier to find but not as readily as blood root. So he would, um, I remember him having me dig blood root several times because 
bloodroot usually comes in, um, it, it spreads easily. We planted a piece here, or Lee planted a piece here, uh, probably 10 or 12 years ago. And it has really spread and gone all the way down this little ditch here. He planted it right up in here by these trees. And it has spread all through there and down that ditch where the water has washed it down. It goes all the way down through there. Now it's just coming up, so we're not seeing as much of it right now. But he saw some and I said, well, I wanted to get some anyway. So since he saw that, <clears throat> There's a whole one. Let me put this paper down. There's a whole one. There's what it looks like. That bloom will bloom, um, open on up. Don't last very long. It comes up like this with this leaf. See how that leaf is kind of wrapped around that stem there? That's what you'll see. Has that leaf wrapped around that stem. You'll see that first. And then it'll flower. And the little root is what you want. The root is, uh, it's called blood root because if you cut into that root, it is very bloody looking. And it um, oozes uh, like a, a bloody looking um, uh, liquid out of it. But that's what you'll see first is this um, leaf wrapped around that stem. And then your bloom will come up. And you can find that in the woods all over the place. Once you find a spot, if you find one, there should be quite a few more there because <clears throat> it usually uh, uh, spreads pretty readily. I'm just going to get a couple of pieces and dry them and um, make a salve out of them. Yeah, it don't take much. Okay, here's one with the little leaf, the little leaf wrapped around the stem there. So, um, Anyway, bloodroot is what they used to use to make black salve. The FDA has banned black salve. They're just starting to There's come up. So, I, yeah, and the I leaves broke the... kind of curl around. Yeah, I broke the little thing off. It would have been the flower mm -hmm. and the seed pod, so... Yeah. early spring and it'll last about two or three weeks and then you won't see the bloom anymore you'll see the uh, leaf still for a little bit but uh, pretty soon it's gone so you have to mark it my dad used to mark a spot if he found it he would mark a spot where it was at and then we would come back with our diggers and dig some up but he always made sure we left some so that it would multiply for you know, a couple years later, we'd go back to that spot. And uh, so everything he dug like that, uh, he was a forager and um, he was a trapper and he was a fisher and <laughs> he'd done a little bit of everything. But when we foraged, he always made sure we left some um, to, uh, you know, to replenish. Anyway, so the blood root, they make a black salve uh, out of. The FDA banned it. I think it was 2016, I believe. I wrote some of this down, but I didn't write that down. Um, they banned it in 2016 because of the... Um, they claimed it was dangerous. And it's like a lot of other uh, things like poke root. They claim poke root is poisonous. But poke root is not actually poisonous. It is just... Um, such a strong uh, medicine that it can easily be uh, too much, you know, overused, too much taken, and then you could uh, be sick or die. And uh, they're so powerful of a medicine that you really have to be careful and know what you're doing and, uh, and take the right dosage. So I will not take this internally because I'm just not that sure of uh, taking it internally. It's not something I wanna take internally, but they did used to do that. And they sell, um, they sell blood root pills and tincture in other countries. And uh, I found it online. I'm gonna put some pictures here of what I found online.
And if I'm not mistaken, I didn't check this thoroughly, but I believe you can have them shipped here even. Um, but our FDA does not approve and will not let you um, make it and sell it here. So uh, anyway, uh, it is good for, the, the salve is good for um, skin tags and warts and even um, cancerous skin cells. And that is what I'm going to make it for. I'm going to have some on hand. Lee did try some on a, a, a wart he had uh, last year. Was it last year you done that? Yeah. Last year, Lee put some. He just he didn't have the salve. He just put a little bit of the juice on a wart. And it did uh, take it away. And um, so, you know, that works. Um, <clears throat> but... You want to put it just exactly on the problem area. And uh, I, I don't believe, personally, that it would damage your skin any other way. But um, the, the reason they said the black salve did, they banned the black salve, because it had a zinc chloride in it, which is a corrosive agent. And that was supposed to... Uh, kill the cancerous cells and then the blood root was to draw out the cancer. When we used to um, hunt it, he would wash it all up. All the roots he hunted, he would wash them up and he would go ahead and dry them before he went to sell them because you would get more money that way out of them, dried. And so he would uh, wash these up and dry them out on racks out in the sun and then go sell them to an older lady that uh, lived about an hour from us. There are things you can add. Uh, I'll put a, a, a picture here of uh, a list of other things they add to the black salve. And uh, so, I don't know that I'll use all that. I might use a, a few of those things. But mostly, I'm just after the uh, black salve with the blood root. If you've heard us uh, before, about a year ago, I had a uh, mole that came up on my chest. And the doctor was worried about it. And she uh, burned it off and sent it off. And it was not cancerous. But it was a, a mole. Uh, I, I could have tried this on if I had had this made up I could have tried that and uh, but I did go to the doctor and get it burned off and all of that and uh, you know that's fine and dandy but if you can't get to the doctor you know you know though SHTF and if we can't get to doctors anymore or you don't have insurance and you can't pay for it uh, that's why I'm gonna make this because next time something like that happens, which I would have just left it, <laughs> I would have just left the mole, but, you know, but uh, if I was worried about it, I could have tried this on there. But that goes down to our uh, woods that we uh, forage in down there. We've been doing the walk in the woods back there and all the way back to the creek. And right here we are on top of the hill by the house. And that is where this is at. So, there you go. There's my outdoor redneck, redneck hot, tub. hot tub there. We haven't up. used. We need to clean it up and use it again. We used mm -hmm. it a few times when we first put it there, but we haven't used it in years, several years. We need to clean it up and do that again. Anyway, there's the house, the laundry on the line. Lee. <laughs> hey, y'all. So, uh, one more thing. So, the... Um, uh, the ingredient, the active ingredient in blood root that is supposed to be good for cancerous cells is the berberine. And the ingredient to avoid that the FDA says is dangerous is called sanquinarine. sanquinarine. And uh, the FDA deemed that, that um, property uh, harmful. Or dangerous. The good stuff and the bad stuff. Good stuff and the bad stuff. Yeah, and uh, so I don't know if I told all of what uh, they used it for 
Years ago, they used it for respiratory infections, wound infections, um, as eczema, psoriasis, skin tags, warts, cancerous skin cells. Cleanse the body of toxins and parasites. I want to make sure I got it all in there. So, um, anyway, um, there you go. Okay, folks, we've got this blood root up in the house. And uh, Lee is going to go ahead and put some on another little wart he has, just to show y'all. And he's going to tell you about the other one. Okay, so here it is cleaned up. Now, it's real red. You can't maybe see it good on here. Yeah, it's pretty red. And there's where, there's where I pulled a little stem off. It's really red. And uh, so we'll dry this. And I'm going to cut into one of these pieces show blood to show it so i'm cutting this open and it will start kind of getting bloody and lee's gonna put just a little dab of that and he can tell you about doing that this is what i do with one that was on as you don't see that wart right there i'm just gonna put a little dab on there know if y'all can see that it's actually turning in a little red color and that's all I'm gonna do ah! <laughs> go on with it honey <laughs> help me mr. Willie help me <laughs> but I don't know if y'all can see it but right here was a wart uh, I had it there for a couple of years, and that's what I done was just that right there. And as you can see, it's it's pretty much gone. I mean, there's I can still see the remnants of it, but the board itself is gone. But it was just like that one right there on my arm. So we'll see what happens there with that one there. If it does the same thing, I say it works, but I'm not saying that I recommend it or anything like that. Yeah. As yeah. a disclaimer, but oh, yeah, disclaimer, we're not recommending. Disclaimer, <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer. Not recommending it. Don't want to get in trouble, but that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. And I'll keep y'all updated on that. There you go. Oh, I'm feeling weak. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Okay, so uh, where's your little piece here? I want to show that again how bloody looking it gets. That's why it's called That's blood bloody. root. So I am going yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. slice this up a little bit and dry it. And, um, and then after it's dried, I'm going to make a powder and then use that powder to make a salve later on. And uh, so that's what we're going to do with it. Uh, I, I personally don't uh, tr trust taking it internally, maybe. Maybe if I had to, maybe if things were really bad and didn't have nothing else, just like poke. I have poke root. They claim poke root is poisonous or toxic, and it is not. It is a very strong medicine that you have to be very, very careful with. I'm gonna research some more before I actually use it. Now, I would do probably what Lee's done, because he done that last year and it was fine. Uh, I don't have anything I need it for right now. <laughs> when I make mine, um, when I make my black salve, it's called black salve, and if you look up black salve, it's, some places are gonna tell you it's dangerous and it's been banned, but some places are going to tell you what all it's good for and 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 you can still buy it from over from from other countries uh anyway there you go i'm just going to put that in the window for now see how bloody those pieces look that's blood root so there you go so um anyway y'all give us a thumbs up comment and subscribe and watch us on thursday nights at 6 Central.